Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Avison Restored Set Review. I'm here with Brad Nelson, the one and only. I'm Evan Irwin, and we are talking about the black cards today. The scary ones. Ooh. And the first one has flavor text so good that Brad thought I made it up when I quoted it in my last magic show. Yes. Appetite for brains. Ooh, appetite. Guys. Now, it does say convert a mana cost four or greater, and you exile it. I mean, how... How good is this card? I got a feeling it's pretty good. Well, at first when I saw the card, I was like, this card is stupid. It's not going to do anything. And then they printed Cavernous Souls. I'm like, this card is awesome. It's going to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get rid of your fatties before I can't counter them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, it's the inverse Inquisition, mm -hmm. but, like, you know, it, it seems cool. I, I don't think it's going to be hitting Legacy because that format's all about one through threes. Then, and, yeah. Because, you know, yeah, you get to exile their Jace or whatever, but okay, sure. We, we don't need that. Uh, a lot of the Planeswalkers now cost five. They, they like, played with them going down on the curve, but now they're coming back up. And we yep. have Gideon and Jace and Tamiyo mm -hmm. uh, and not Tabalt. Not to ball, but yeah. the rest of them. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so like it's going to hit all them. Titans are going to come back in strong force for a little bit. Yep. That's a good answer for them. And that's like, this is a good card for the problematic cards for zombies. Like, not a lot of the early cards really interact with zombies too well. Mm -hmm. It's like the Titans that actually can catch them up, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, besides timely reinforcement and tangible virtue, that's really good. And you can't stop that. But anyway, Bad. that's a bad part about zombies. <laughs> <laughs> nice token makers. God help us all. Yes. Yeah. So, Appetite for Brains, I think, is going to be like a really sweet card in the metagame. It's going to be a really nice foil for those who play in other formats. Like, seems really good in EDH. Mm -hmm. Like, everything costs a million in that format. Yeah. And, and, it, and it neuters on barrel rights. Like, even taking on barrel rights is fine. Or the, the target or anything. I, I, I like the card a lot. Absolutely. So, Barter and Blood is an awesome reprint. <sighs> I've been waiting on this one, man. I've yeah. been wanting Barter and Blood to come back for <laughs> so long. And then they printed Sigarda. And I was like... Well, but they, you have to print something that neuters this card. You just, like, you play all of your undying creatures and then barter your opponent? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good deal for me. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. This is, this is how magic works nowadays. I mean, like, I was just like, I was expecting Barter and Blood in like the last three sets, and then it, mm -hmm. like, it finally showed up, and I was just like, yes! Yeah, very good card. Works really well with Liliana. Yep. Uh, just being able to like make them sack a guy and then sack the next two guys when, when they hit the curve up and play multiple guys. Exactly. Obviously, it has weaknesses as it's, you know, it only eats up half of a Lingering Souls. But if, you know... That card's not the best thing we, ever. We, we would waste multiple days if we said how a card interacts well or bad with Lingering Souls. So we go through We just won't do that. Because, yeah. yeah, but, like, the idea of turn three Liliana, sack a guy, turn yes. four Barter and Blood, because you know they, like, try to follow that up. Yes. You know? It's like, well, I know you got a plus one, you're Liliana. So I'm like, dot, dot, dot. And then you just yep. Barter and Blood them away. So that'll be... That'd be pretty and powerful. even even just good in, in creature mirrors where you have undying. I think I, I think mm -hmm. that's something that is going to make this card a lot better than before because you can never play creatures with your barter and blood, but now you can. Yeah. So that's I like that aspect. That's really cool. So uh, blood artist is next. A good two mana O one. When it or another creature dies, you drain one. Like he is the most sick person ever. He just waits <laughs> for people to die and then he paints with their blood. Oh! That's disgusting. Well, you know, great art cannot be made without great suffering. Great sacrifice. Yeah. Moving on. Blood <laughs> flow con I mean, like, if, to give Blood Artist just a, a few more seconds, is this card worth it at all in Limited? I mean, it's attrition, like, defined. Yeah, but you're, like, wasting a card for this aspect, and I don't think creatures are going to, like, trade that often. Yeah. I think... I it, just remember Falcon Wrath Noble was, like, so good, but it was also a 2-2 two -two flyer. You know? Yes. And that matters. <laughs> yeah, that definitely matters. I, I do like the ability, and Felkarth Noble was uh, a amazing. Mm -hmm. And it usually just used the ability. But I don't think this format is as aggressive either, mm -hmm. where that actually had a huge impact. Because these creatures do get really, really big um, in this format compared to that set. They, they didn't really. Like, there's a ton of more removal. There's a lot more pressure. That's what made that card really good. And I like how, you know, like, Johnny's are going to want to find a way to loop a creature, you know, sacrificing a creature I mean, this is like the... the because that'll just kill someone. This is the best way to the Safi combo. Yeah. This is the best way to do the Safi combo. Fair. So, Bloodflow Connoisseur is... You know, uh, not quite. Uh, what's the ghoul for a green or for a black? The one one. Uh, you can carry Peter. Carry Peter. Thank you. But it can block. It can block. Yeah. I mean, for ca three mana. Carry Peter was probably undercosted for constructive play, and I don't think they wanted some kind of uh, sack out like that in standard. That was like super aggressive early. Yeah. Well, I mean, carry Peter they knew was good because they put it in rare. But yeah. carry Peter was common. Wait, wasn't it? 
the one one for one that sex. Oh, I'm sorry. They made a they made a like a special promo version. I thought it was. Really nope. in that case. No, it was common. Oh, okay, but it just it was block. very bad and limited. Okay, but it obviously couldn't block, so it was yes. that great. But this one can block, so the, and it does interact with Undyne. You can get a couple counters on it. Yeah, you can. You can trick your guy. Yeah, you can even it, it interacts yeah. poorly with Soul Bond. Like if you, it's like the bad way to interact with it. Like man, I really did that wrong. Sack my guy. <laughs> it's just not not that great. Um, mm-hmm. I like Bone Splinters though. Bone Splinters is awesome. That's that's a great way to do to screw up with the. The soul bond too. Like if you just soul bonded <laughs> wrong, you can like kill the one guy, and you can invest earlier in putting two creatures together that you don't really like. Hmm. But you're like, well, I can just do this because I'm going to kill a guy later in the game anyway. Absolutely. And it changes your opponent's math and certain things. And I like this card. This this is good with all the bad creatures in certain situations that you don't want to use. Sure. And well, this will be a high pick. Yeah, I mean, it was just like in shards block. You always trade your worst creature for their best creature. Yeah. And the ability to sort of reset soul bond, I think, is just a fantastic upside. Yeah. Which is great. No, this is a great card. So Butcher Ghoul uh, does have Undyne. It is, you know, it's no Young Wolf. Yeah, they couldn't give the power of Young Wolf to Black. Ooh. Would have been too good. Ooh, the zombie, the zombie Young Wolf. I mean, look at him. He is a just, like, I don't get it. One thing that I don't get in the site, well, you'll see this theme in a lot of cards, mm-hmm. is humans running after zombies. How is a zombie <laughs> smart enough to run away from things? <laughs> I've never understood this Look, before in my life. The zombies got cognizant when the hell vault opened, apparently. Did they? I and then they realized that they're just dumb and I they just run made away? that up. No, yeah, of course no. they didn't. They're zombies. They're running they away from people. Brains. How do they know how to do this? <laughs> What is he gonna do? Fall, trip because he's only one one, and then turn into a two two and turn around and start attacking him? Like They're I'm coming to get me. Wait a minute. You know <laughs> what? Uh, Corpse Traders is a four mana three three. I love the art. I, I like the card. Like a th- three mana, uh, like a hill giant is actually pretty good in this format. That's yeah. that's a big body, and like this ability seems sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, just being able to like rip out their big cards. There's a lot of five, six, seven drops that are really good in this format. Mm-hmm. If you can just like. You know, you you play like your crypt, like creepers or any of the like the small little guys or your your horrific butcher ghoul. Your butcher ghouls. I'm and stacking my butcher ghouls yeah, to get your best card. And, and and you steal cards from their hand. That that's yeah. great. And like this is also one of my favorite arts. I just like the the, oh, the such thing. Good art. Like uh, this art makes me think of it's kind of like Game of Thrones where yeah. all this war and stuffs going on, but there's still like these these back trades and like mm-hmm. all these people talking to you like, like these guys could like be. Killed by like zombies or vampires at any minute, but they got to get this trade in, right? <laughs> <laughs> they got to do these like dark deals and the yeah. mist and all this stuff. And like you could just, that art is just so invocative. It's like yes. it puts you in the whole world immediately. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and another sort of big upside is that it doesn't have to tap, you know what I mean? Like you can still attack with your heel giant and then use its cool yeah. ability with your undying guys. Yeah. Uh, Crypt Keeper is next and is a yes. reprint from Odyssey Block and is freaking sweet. Yeah, he or she, I can't tell. Has not eaten for a very long time. You can just tell. It's been a while. She's about to fall apart. Hey, but she'll be in vogue next week. Cause, yes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> nice waistline. Here we go. But I mean, yeah. As for just a good two drop that just messes with you know whatever it is they're trying to yes. do with the graveyard. I there's not a lot going on in the graveyard in this set. Uh, I haven't we sort of went over that? But that's the great thing about this card is it isn't just this is not a card designed for. Uh, limited. This is a card that's designed to impact and block and constructed. Mm. This is to fix problems with graveyard interactions because zombies already is missing a lot of good two drops. So like even this, this isn't that good of a two drop. It's still a two drop. But zombie needed one, and yeah, they needed a way to fight. You know, unbearable rights. Yes. Ridiculousness. Or or other undying creatures. Right. I mean, because right now they're running like highborn ghoul. You know, the yeah. two one intimidate, and like I would rather run crypt keeper because oh, for sure. You know, to stop your snapcaster or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or there's there's gonna there's gonna be implications for this card. It, it it's like a great way for zombies to interact with frights. Mm-hmm. So I like love the next card. I love Dark Imposter. I think this card is freaking sweet. I have ordered one for my cube. I'm gonna give it a whirl. It's a card that for me is like a slow burn. You want to play this card and then just sort of sit back and counter spells or sit back and remove things because once you've got six mana, like you're just exiling everything. You just have, you know, yeah. and that's, that, that seems to me like what a, a control deck wants is the ability to have, you know, uh, reusable removal. And this is literally the definition. It's just like six mana, get rid of that thing. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't doesn't affect hexproof, which is obviously a drawback, and it's supposed to be. But you know, I, I like the fact that for me, and because I'm a cube enthusiast, this is going to be a pretty sweet cube card in blue black control. Is it? I think so. It's not just too small. 
Uh, it might be. Like, again, I think it is. I'm going to give it a whirl. I do this all the time. You know, you throw cards yeah. in, they stink, you get rid of them. But, you know, when they first came out, you don't know. Yeah. So it, I, I got high hopes it, for... In my opinion on, on any cards for constructive playability, playability mm -hmm. is if they have an immediate impact on the game. Sure. And this does not. It takes nine mana to actually do anything. Yep. And so that's like a big downside for me. Sure. Uh, I think this is going to be a great card in Limited, obviously. It's just an upgrade to Royal Assassin. It's just a proactive. But for the most part, I don't see this card having an impact unless you play Training I, Grounds. I, yeah, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I can see... I can see training grounds being awesome with this, but uh, you know, but dark imposter in terms of like constructed may just be very, very well be terrible. But I'm happy if it's a good cube card and card, and if it's not, then I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, you just take you, it. You out gave again. it a whirl. I mean, like you know, this thing is no one, no one likes it right now. Guess it's not expensive. It. Guess what kills it? Everything. Murderous red cap. Murderous red cap kills it. Yes. Last time I played cube with Evan, I top deck murderous red cap to kill him. Killed me. Yeah. Death wind. Uh, okay. This is awesome. It's great. Have this they is, made this card before? No, they made Disembowelment. Or Disembowel. Oh, it's equal to the mana cost. Yes, this card is just infinitely better. Yeah, it's just straight up minus Because six, minus most, six. most creatures do not have the power equal to their converted mana cost. And right. you can do less when you can do trade. So if you're choked on mana, you can still just give a creature negative one, negative one, and block with a four, four, and it dies. So, like, this card is just an upgrade. Yeah, it doesn't, you don't have to invest the same resources plus one that they yes. did. And now you can just blow them out with a yeah. variable. And look at the eyes. art. Woo! Bean that is destroyed. not a good. That you, you wake up one day and you're like, man, today's gonna be a good day. Nope. <coughs> nuclear fallout. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight Terminator Two nuclear fallout. Uh, Demonic Rising. This is a neat card. This is another one of those. They have this sort of sub theme, particularly in black, that if you have exactly one guy, yeah, you get I mean, something cool. I mean. All I know about this set is there's all these cards that do this. I'm just going to sing, like, one is the loneliest <laughs> note. You know, like, what else are you supposed to do with this set? Like, you just have to sing that song. You do. Yeah. You um, and your Hexproof guy just hanging out there, and then you play Demonic Rising. This card, like, this is the backbreaker for the format if this set is good. If this set is awesome... You mean for, like, the limited format? For limited, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. If this card is good, the set's going to be awesome. If this card is bad, I don't like the set that much. Because, like, they make a rare like this. Mm -hmm. They have such a, like, a weird impact on the game. It's just, like, it's such a restrictive, a bit, like, trigger. Like, yeah. you have to just have one guy, which is so Well, awkward. I mean, they make you work for it, right? But it's not even that big of an upside. A free 5-5 five, five flying demon? Yeah, I played with High Priest before. <laughs> yeah. High Priest was fair. <laughs> I mean, so, but to go well with it, we'll just double these two cards up. I think his favorite buddy is the next card. I, well, a little. No. Why not? At the beginning of your end step, you make it, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you sack it. Oh, at the end step? I thought it was, oh, I thought it was at upkeep. Yeah. I thought you always get to attack and get no, a new one. No, no, that'd be neat. But, like, um, never mind, sorry. It's all right. So, Demonic Taskmaster is next, and I like this guy a lot. I think they pushed this guy really far. I'm just like, when you see three mana, four, three flyer, for, you know, you're just like, and then you don't even have to sack himself. No. I, I just feel like a few years ago, they would have made this exact same card, and you'd have to sack him. You know, at the beginning of your upkeep, sack a creature. Yeah. And now it's sack another creature, because this guy can just, like, win the game by himself. Well, I mean, that's how magic's working, right? Like, you, you're you going to play a deck where he's the only card. Yeah. I mean, and you want to. And that, as for me, I was like, wow, that, that guy seems great. And then I saw Demon Lord of Ashmouth, and I was like, wow. I what? I, I like Gravecrawler. I think, you know, zombies need a four drop that's not terrible. Zombies need a four drop that's not terrible. This is terrible. Oh. You have to work so hard for it. Like, you do? You don't? Well, I mean, if you don't have Gravecrawler, you are actually just losing cards to this You're guy. You're losing multiple different cards, yeah. And if, and if they don't, you don't have another creature in play, like, they go Vapor Snake Dismember and, like, blow you out. All right. There's, there's the the problem with the black creatures so far, like the the pushed ones, is like they can be super powerful, or you can just co get completely blown out. And in, in my, okay, I guarantee that there's okay, yeah, variants. I don't know what. No, 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 it's, it's right. Like, the way I like play, variants. <laughs> I don't know. The way I like playing Magic is not getting blown out by things like that. But I guarantee, I I know the F and M. Like I remember my buddy back in my 11 M that would just. 
pick up all these black cards and be like, they work so well together, and just build it for months. So like this, there there are players out here that are gonna love these. Mono red one two legacy opens. Like you know, talk about variants. That's just like that deck has the only positive. Well, is blue red mirrors in the last weekend? Yeah, I mean you know, but like you know, mono red whatever is is ridiculous variants, and I don't think it's as high as like you know a zombie deck that plays this thing. Really? Mm -hmm. I'll have to play test with him. I don't know. I, again, and me too. And, and I'm going to throw them in my cube and we want to give it a whirl. I sacking things. I, I like making them second. Well, I, I, I like sacking. sacking it if I can just pay a black and get the grave caller back. Like, that is pretty sweet. That's what I want to do, and that's what yeah, I think yeah. you want to do. But I don't know if that works. Um, Descent into Madness is next and is a very odd card. Um, you can't you can't do the smokestack trigger mm -hmm. trick, and I think that was one of the cool things about smokestack was yeah. that. They're going to sack a thing before you do, yeah. and then you can just sack one thing, and they have to sack two. And you know, and that that the way you can work it in your favor. You can never do that with sending the madness. And so, I'm not I'm not descending. Yeah, the way into this madness, the way that this card interacts, I think that's how you descend into actual madness. Is trying to figure out what you want to do with this card. Like like when it's in play, you're just like man, what I have no idea what I'm supposed to sack, or do I sack this and yada yada. I, I mean, obviously lingering souls, but well, your opponent like casts lingering souls, and you're just like oh. yeah, exactly, right? I mean, so that, I don't I don't I think the best thing it can do is if it can if it was like one less mana, it could like interact favorably against the control decks or the titan decks. God, it'd be an, ew, I don't want, everyone, I don't want this type of thing to be like good. you know tier one. Yeah, mm. this would be bad. This is kind of a miserable experience. It's kind of a descent, descent in the madness. Ah! Ah! We're clever. <laughs> Dread Slaver. Five mana, three, five. If you if you block <laughs> this guy and your guy dies. Don't do that. I don't know, like that's not good for you. Don't you know, you don't block this thing unless you have to. Uh you're probably gonna use some removal on this guy. I mean limited. You you're know. gonna ignore him. He's a three five for five. He's, uh, have, have you ever had to block a three he, sentry ever a, in your life? He's a he's a latch keeper, right? He's like yeah. he's, a, he's a three whatever unblockable. You don't block the guy. Like, yeah, just ignore him and tack with flyers. Like, yeah. don't first pick him. Driver of the Dead has some like awesome flavor, like some sweet yeah. artwork. I mean, look at him patiently waiting there. He's just hanging he's just out. Like, he's like, you do not know what I have in store for you. <laughs> <laughs> I could see, like, you know, modding some, like, you know, needy needles in there and, you the, know, like a little blankie. The biggest problem with this card that uh, actually BBD pointed out for me, Brian mm -hmm. Brown Dune, mm -hmm. is uh, there's, like, not any two drops in the set. <laughs> there's, there's, like, very there's, rare. There's a few. There's a uh, Crypt Keeper. Yeah. <laughs> there's some white ones. Exactly, I don't know. Yeah. Like, there's just not There a isn't ton. a ton. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah. And, you know, they, they made sure that when they give any sort of Revelarchy type mm -hmm. ability, it's got to be really powered down. And so it's pretty powered down. But, you know, they try to give you a little value. Four mana, three. Oh, yeah, it's, he's fine. He's a, he's a you know, duder. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, he's good. He'll see a lot of play. Essence Harvest is actually kind of interesting to me. I think it's a little better than a lot of people are giving it credit for, which is just like, you know, eh, eh, whatever, X card. I'm like, eh. If you got six power on the board, that's, that's six. That's not bad for three mana. Like, no, I, I, I think How much are you actually paying for Drain Lives? I mean. Yeah, it, it's, it's a get you card in Limited. Yeah. Uh, it's just definitely one of those cards you might board in when you need a little bit more reach in a certain matchup. Or if you have a, a Shade. Ooh. Well, there's a there's a, a red guy. Uh, I think it's like five mana for a six one or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, red has a lot of that very high power, low toughness thing. So in a red black deck, all I'm saying is that that's for three stretch. mana. That's a big stretch. <laughs> okay, what I'm trying to make it work. All right, it's kind of <laughs> man, common. These are things you'll have to do in like horrible sealed pools. Like when you're like, God, I have no way to win. <laughs> How am I gonna win? I guess I'm gonna have I to resolve this. this crappy creature in this crappy spell and hope it gets me there. Three times in a row. <laughs> oh God! Evernight Shade, though, that's wow. that's a heck of a shade, man. This card is very good. Wow. Yeah, it's a double shade. Like they've they, they've been making these like four mana shades with a certain upside a lot lately. Right. But this, this guy's one, insane. That's a heck of an upside. That's for the a best shade. shade in a long time. Yeah. I mean, maybe ever. But wow, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't have been surprised if this was like a five mana one one. Yeah, same ability, same everything. Because we've paid four mana for these types of shades. That and this flying. one, yeah, but this upside is way bigger. I get two shades, two shades, dub shades. Do you know? Do you know? It doesn't have evasion though. It's very difficult to kill a shade in combat. You have to use removal, so you'd have to use two removals to kill this guy. He doesn't need evasion. He's gonna bash through them. Oh my gosh, he doesn't need it. 
mean, no. it's always nice to have. <laughs> so exquisite blood. The the other side of Sanguine Bond. Combo? Bondo combo. Wee! <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah, so that's cute. Uh, this is one of those where, like, I, it feels like a, a really good casual card. I think casual players are going to get a big kick out of that, you know? Yeah. I attack you and I gain all the life and stuff. That's that's the type of thing that I think. Oh, yeah, that works, kick out doesn't of. it? Yeah, because, you know, I damage, forgot that damage turns into damage loss. Is, yeah. is loss of life. So that's cute, you know? Yeah, and that's cool. I mean, I don't know where it's going to fit. Or is that a guy? I, I'm one of the. Those are scary. The, uh, yeah, I'm erring on the side of female, but that's kind of. That's scary. Creepy. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared of it now. Uh, all right, Ghoul Flesh. Okay. Ghoul Flesh looks weird. Ghoul Flesh almost looks like a photograph that they modified. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, of all the art, I was just like, is that a, like an actual person? They just kind of like, it's some looks like a guy that works in like a, a recent day like office. Yeah. Just hanging out and then like, you know, got Ghoul Fleshed. Yeah. Sweet uh, card. It's. Uh, Really? What? It's a removal spell or a negative. Like it, it's yeah, it gets rid of like the X ones. It, right? it gets rid of a lot of the soulbound creatures that that cost that are all a lot of the small ones. Are and that tapper. Remember the uh, tapper that exiles the zombies. Yes. Make him a zombie. Ha! ha. A taste of your own medicine. Cool flesh. Get you. So I really <sighs> like Gloom Surgeon. He's so cool. I in think that he's dark so little cool. alleyway. He's so oh awesome. I want to be his friend. The artwork is so cool. I think the artwork is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's great artwork, and, and you know. Zombie, it's, it's, just, it's not a zombie, but it just feels like it would be in the zombie aggro deck because it's the Why tundra. Why is he a surgeon? <laughs> well, he, he wants to cure them of their lives. Apparently he True. used to be. <laughs> he used to be. Or maybe he died and decided to go to ghost college and, you know, <laughs> get, like, some ghost loans. And, you know, maybe he lives in, like, a crappy ghost apartment. And, no one can even make him pay for blood anymore. Exactly. Doesn't matter. He doesn't have to pay him back. What are they going to do, kill him? <laughs> Put him in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> Grave. Ooh, that joke went too long. Grave exchange <laughs> is six mana. That's, you know. This is, oh my, I haven't seen the, and oh, I. I haven't seen the art to this here. That's so pretty. It's it's a freaky little card. I like, like the art. art. It's really cool. I like it that it's sort of, it's very different. It's, you know, high contrast. And, yeah. And, you know, the bones are very well laid out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's cool. Uh, as for the card itself, like, you know, in limited, you're going to be playing this thing and hoping... They don't have some little dork. Yeah. I mean, you kind of got to work yourself into the right position for this I, card. I, I think this is a sideboard card. This is like an attrition. They don't have, like, you set this card up, but I don't think you can just put it in any deck. Yeah. Like, if this was a reanimation spell, yes, it's awesome. Well, yeah. And that's why, actually, I thought that's what it was. Yeah. You know, I was like, man, six mana, you're going to be able to zombify, and they sack a dude, and that's really good. But then I was like, oh, this it's a common, so it's just going to raise dead. I mean, let's, let's think of stock mana for a second. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, stock mana, it would have been like four mana. <laughs> pretty ridiculous. <laughs> no, but. it's like three mana. Raise dead plus Chainer's Edict. Well, you yeah, know, but like in a, in a limited environment, you know, you have to make the rule spells like crazy. Yeah, expensive. I think this is very overcosted. Yeah. For what it does. Well, this is another one of those like, it doesn't matter how much they make it cost, you're probably going to play it because it removes a creature. No. Okay, fine. Look like uh, like a lot if of If it the said tokens. destroy target creature and return. I saw the next card, we'll just go to the next card. Fine, Gristlebrand. <laughs> oh my god. Like by far my favorite card in the set. Wow. There were people who um who had thought that Gristlebrand was actually Garrick. That Garrick was changing. Oh, he's turning and into because evil. Garrick always had these like horn things yeah. coming out and he has the horns from his, his lower jaws and they like wrap around and stuff. And that you know, Garrick had just been completely oh. corrupted. And this is what he turned into. And yeah, I, I thought that it. I thought that was cool. It's not true. No. <laughs> I was like, that would have been totally sweet. That would be it's really not sweet. True. Yeah, that would be really awesome. I think that would have been a better place to take the story because I mean, like Derek's like, had like a ton of versions and yeah. you know, it's time to sort of move on, but that would have also made him from a planeswalker back into a creature. So well, but then he turns into a creature, but then he realizes that he was a planeswalker, and then he becomes a planeswalker, and then right. they crystal band the planeswalker. He loses, yeah, he loses the spark, yeah. becomes a crystal brand. He gains the spark, becomes the crystal yeah. brand planeswalker. Like that, I don't know. Again, that'd have been that cool would be to really me. cool. Plenty of digital ink has been spilt over Gristle Brand. I will say that I have one for my cube. It is going to be my go-to black fatty. Yeah. I can't wait to I mean, reanimate the, this thing. The first oh. time I saw it, I was like, Jerry, we have to play with the new cards this week because I want to play with this card so bad. And like, <sighs> I built the Gristle Brand combo deck with Necrotic Who's like, JVL, JVL calls me. And he's like, <laughs> think, look at this, think of this. And he always has the craziest ideas. Right. And so I was like, I got to think of a really good deck to beat 
beat Jerry with this week. And then five minutes later, I'm like, what are we doing with Necroticus? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves Necroticus. Yes. I love Necroticus. This is the best ability for Necroticus. I can't think of a better one. I mean, just go through any any iteration. I'm pretty Zom sure. Pay seven, then draw you, seven. And then you play Zombie Infestation, and you dump your hand, and then you play Vault of the Archangels, and you give them all life, yeah, like, you and you do. attack, and then you draw more cards. How did it work out? Uh, I beat Jerry. Yeah? The file disappeared. Then I played him again. He beat me, and then we both wore dresses. All right. Well, then everyone was a winner. No, everyone lost. Oh. Well, I still think the guy is totally sweet. Except I did realize that my legs are naturally not hairy, so. <laughs> so good for you. Yeah. So less maintenance. <laughs> All right, so Harvester of Souls is next, and this is your six mana, five, five, death touch for some reason. Something dies, you're drawing a card. Yeah, every Not time. just yours. Yeah, not just your guys. There's, yeah, trade. you just draw. Block? Yeah. Oh, oh. Hmm? I mean. Do you want to block my guy? No? No? Okay, take five. Sweet, thanks. You want to block the, my guy? Great, I'll draw a card. Stack the Alchemist, Alchemist Apprentice. Drop two. Draw two. Jeez. Trigger, trigger. Have you, seen, have, you seen, have you seen his flavor text stuff? It's like the best thing on the planet. Mm, the best judge, ever. Jury and executioner. You know why? Why? Because he killed them all. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no one around the judge except I'm me. glad I'm not a judge or a jury. I'm a judge. I'm a level one DCI judge. <sighs> you too can be a judge in the judge. Get him, Harvester. They're sweet. All right, go, Harvester, go. Homicidal seclusion, amazing artwork. Yes. Love this artwork. This is the kind of artwork that it probably happened in the Wizards uh, thing, but I definitely want them to just bring this one to life. You know how they turn the art to life thing? Oh, yeah, when something like I just want to see the birds bit. start flying away. And I want to see the person the, in the window, like, no, you know. No, the light, the, like you see a shadow come up behind her, <laughs> and then, a sha then the, the, the lights go out. Yeah, and that's like this little bit of part of the movie yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know? It's just like the birds are flying, then someone comes up behind, and then next yeah. scene. Cool. Enchantment-wise, like, they made it an uncommon, I think, for a reason, because if you do just have one guy, and if he has Hexproof, no, the, like, it's going to be nuts. Yeah, this card is actually just awesome. Yeah. I, I think it's great. Like, you just have one threat, you attack him, it dies. Play another threat, attack him, it dies. Yeah. Uh, you you trade with a lifelink, like, it's so annoying. Yeah, wow. and and you get to trade up all the time. You play a two-two, it becomes five power, blocks their five guy. The, the the rest of their board can't really deal damage to you, because you're gaining five already. So then you do it again. Like this card is just an attrition nightmare. I was thinking like you know is it? I don't know if it was really necessary to give a, a toughness boost, but it sure is nice. Like yeah. okay, sure, because you know I think you're finding ways to use it and abuse it without it. But why not? Human frailty. I've already brought up the Terminator Two. Yeah, it's great intro scene. Like. Come on. It's so good. It is. And there's no way they didn't think about that. There's absolutely... Stepping like, on the Zach, skull. Zach Hilo was in there and be like, if you guys seen Terminator, we got to do that on the art. It <laughs> has to happen. <laughs> you know the scene. It'd be D.I. Gas. <laughs> <laughs> D.I. Gas. Ob. Ob. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but in standard, do you think this is a worthwhile sideboard card? Um, no, I think... You can just invest the extra mana into killing everything with Go for the Throat and, and Death Mark. Good I think way. it's a great block card. I think mm. once rotation, it might see more play if humans are just that more important. Mm. But right now, there's just not enough human based decks or or uh, things like that. So I don't think it's going to be as powerful. I'd rather just Doomblade things. And I'm sure that you know there are multiple people at Wizards who just wished it could have been destroy target human. Just. You know, yeah, destroy just target so we can human. have those three words, you know, destroy, destroy target, target human. human, and like you know, it's creature, and we know it's creature involved. Yeah, but anyway, and here's the card that I have the biggest just fuss over. <laughs> what is he doing? Okay, he's running away. Okay, first it's hunted ghoul. Yeah, black mana for a one-two, with a downside. I don't get why every single them squires, man, yeah. they gotta be bad. But the other one had an upside. The white one had an upside. This one had a downside. Well, Yav, so he can't. Squire killer, one's he can't terrible. block humans. Okay, A, zombies should never block humans. They should always just be attacking them. Eating humans. B, he's running away from them. <laughs> and Another zombie running away from I, people. I don't get it. And he looks so frail. Like, he can't do anything. Like, how does he even stand? He's just bone and half skin. Ugh. I don't get it. And why is he running away? Zombies, <laughs> wizards. Zombies don't run away. Zombie wizards. And if you zombie apocalypse, those humans are now zombies. They can't become humans again. What killed all the humans if they're all running away? I don't get it. Killing Wave is next. I like 
this card in limited, but not so much in constructed. This is one of those where you find yeah. out that if you give your opponent a choice, they're going to make the one that's best for them every time. Yes. So you have to make sure that if you cast it, the one that's best for them is actually good for you. Yes. So it it just mm. yeah. In limited, you're going to find I think the boards are going to get gummed up. Like you know, the format might be slow enough to where you have like bunch of creatures, bunch of creatures killing wave for six or five, and then like you actually get. Or if some you can ever if you can ever like be ahead on life and you make everything to the life that he has, you yeah. get to keep the one guy. Yeah. And then and then kill him with that one guy. You just put him in a, a rough spot. Yeah. This card's going to be good and limited more than fifty percent of the time. I'll give you that. Yeah. The, the problem, yeah, I like that this card exists. It's an interesting sort of thought experiment. Uh, it's a way to sort of teach people EV and, and how these types of cards work. And yeah. so I'm, I'm glad for that. Um, uh, Mallfield Twins. Mixed Grave, or Fixed Grave Titan. <laughs> they, they took that card and they made it correct. But yeah. in the meantime, we have Grave Titan. But I love that the flavor of this card is sweet. They just literally just... They just yeah, they just split apart and they attack you again. Mm -hmm. I've played so many video games where that happens that finally a magic card does it. Yay. Yeah, you kill something, it just turns into two, and then you have to fight <laughs> it again. And kill miniature versions. And yeah. Um, Marrow Bats feels like, you know, pretty awesome and limited, but any flyer is going to block it. Any flyer is going to make you pay for yeah. life. So it's if you can have a, a bonus, like the plus three, plus one. Yes. Like, oh, wow. With yeah, lifelink and you pay for yeah, life? Yeah, yeah. Sure. sure. I'll do that. Sure. Yeah, I'm Done. okay with this. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I think uh, if the if you can deal with all the small flyers, this card has a really good upside because it mm -hmm. can like kill. It can block. It's a very good blocker mm -hmm. and kills a lot of the ground pounders that are four toughness and regenerate. But for the most part, bleh. yeah. I mean, too bad it doesn't work with fate flower, and you could just like regenerate four times, hit fate flower, and just <coughs> serious man. Still looking for that fate flower. Mental agony. You know, when you got a mine rot with an upside, you pay four mana for it. And the upside is never worth the extra mana. Not this one. Not any of them. Fine. Yet. Yet. One day. One day. But you don't really want awesome mine rots. No, they're born blightning. <sighs> yeah, that was, yeah, don't do that again. That no. That's terrible. Necrobite, three mana. I love the flavor of this car. I love the art <laughs> on this car. It's like, I don't rare. understand it's it. It's just a rare, it's just a wee just little a snake. snake zombie. Nice. Zombie ah. snake. Get you. <laughs> Love that guy. It's cool. Don't touch me again. <laughs> <laughs> He's death touch and you regenerate it. I mean, you know, it's, it's a fine. removal it's spell. Good. And I think that's kind of cool. Yep. Um, it's a removal spell that can that you can get blown out by with all the crazy blink and I mean, flicker the, effects we, and we've stuff. Had, and we've had effects like that. I think there was one in Ravnica that did the same thing. Like, give a creature death touch and regenerate it. Hmm. And it was a good card. It was like four mana. So I think that card will be great. Fair enough. So, Polluted Dead. He must be really disgusting. <laughs> Like how he's got a green he, slime yeah, like, off of it. If he died, like that's another like a lot of these things. I swear to God, these people like made these cards over video games. I guarantee there's a game where if you kill something, then you can't actually move across that land because it kills the land. Yeah, this is, this is a card. Like, well, I mean, you know, Ken Nagel talks all the time about how he plays tons of video games yeah. and Devil May Cry this and Devil May Cry that and yeah. how he you know just loves that type of stuff. So I can imagine a ton of ideas yeah, the, come the, from there. The flavor, I, I love the flavor of this set, and this is yeah. another one. It's like if you kill the zombie and it destroys the land because it just. It's too disgusting to walk on. <laughs> it's so <laughs> gross. But, it, you know, the red one, uh, it, uh, Pitch Burn Devils, I think, mm -hmm. is the one from uh, Innistrad. Yeah. And, you know, the red one, you get to Bolt. The black one, you get to Stone Ray. Yeah. Okay. Predator's Gambit. We can't Gambit. all be winners. Predator's Gambit is another one of those upside if you just control exactly one creature. Yeah. Put all them eggs in that one basket so you can get blown out all at the same time. I mean, it, it still is, like, uh, what's the, the super iconic, what, what's the... Unholy Strength? Unholy Strength, yeah. yeah. Like, I like a, it's an Unholy Strength, which yeah. is fine. Yeah, it's fine. What I mean, side? I'm not going to play, ever play with it, ever. <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> but it's cool that it exists. Because my exists. opponents will play with it. Yeah, they will. Blowout. Coolest flavor. I, I, I just like the picture. I like the flavor text. I hate the <laughs> casting cost to body. But <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, isn't that one of the sort of the uh, the extended art pictures they made in Future Sight? Yes, the, one of those zombies. Can't remember what the name is. Yeah, yeah. But it was a five mana five three, and then they made yeah. it in uh, in the core set. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It's just a, a, a two black three colorless five three is just one of those sort of standardized yeah, creatures. They do that, but like they never have this suite of art or flavor text. Art's pretty sweet. Flavor text is better. Have yeah. you read it yet? You ever cornered a wounded vampire? That's a walk in the cathedral garden in comparison. Yeah, I like guy. it. 
I just wish that's the guy. Like he said it like, <laughs> as he distressed. What was that? Yeah, get scared. <laughs> Searchlight Geist, two mana. Or I'm sorry, three mana, two one flyer. You know, this is the another, sort of the yeah. other the the other uh, Geist, the, that, the mirror version of the other yes, Geist. Yes, except this one just wants to alpha strike. The other one wants to sit sit around and be patient. Yeah, I think or this just trade fine, for yeah. a really good card. This card's very good. It's it's aggressive early. It deals with big guys late. Yep. It's awesome. I love the idea that you have, you know, high mana abilities you can sink mana into yep. and do things with. Soul Cage Fiend, three mana, three, two. Thumbs up approval from Brad Nelson. Yeah, I'll take the beats. Beat, beat, beat. I mean, this card, I, I could see this card seeing some constructive play. I mean, it, it has to fight with Messenger, which is the sucky part. Well, it's also not a zombie. Well, I mean, just so saying as a get, beater. Well, it like, doesn't get pumped by the Lord, um, and it doesn't bring back no, the Crawler. I don't even think the Lord is that good. The Lord's not that good, but it doesn't bring back Gravecrawler, which I think kind of is a thing. I, I agree. I mean, it um, isn't as good as Messenger, but like if Messenger didn't exist, like this, this, these stats could see constructed play. These stats are good. Yeah, that's why I like I like this card a lot. Like this is pushing constructed playability, and not a lot of cards in the set are. I'm really curious about Treacherous Pit Dweller, though. First of all, that's a mouthful. Secondly, it's a two mana four three. So, just by itself, it's a two yeah. mana four three, but. But it's a big butt. It's not. It's not a little butt. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, and it has, it has a big. And butt. I don't. I don't like this butt. It has a big butt, and we cannot lie. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, treacherous pit dweller has the the worst. Pretty awkward when, drawback. When it enters the battlefield from your graveyard, you don't get it anymore. They get a five four. Yeah, it is not good. Uh, the problem with this is if you use any cards to make it good, you're in, you're like pseudo mulliganing just to make it good, yeah. and. There's no format that I can ever think of that, like, this creature won't won't die. Like, you'd have to, like, play a grave crawler into this and then start removing everything, and you'd, like, pigeonhole yourself stuck at always having enough removal to deal with everything just to deal with damage. Just to deal time. with what may happen if your guy might yeah. die. Yeah, and if this guy gets good, like, there's no real good removal that kills him, mm -hmm. like, actually destroys him and puts him in the graveyard and not RTs him. But if he does get good, then people just start playing, like, incinerate. Well, and yeah, just I mean, blow them out. dismember and whatever. Well, yeah, like. dismember too. But yeah, so Triumph of Cruelty is, uh, you know, it's it's the sort of the another flip side of the uh, uh, Triumph of Ferocity. I think is the, well, is the yeah, other they, one. I mean, the arts go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. And yeah. this is where Liliana's winning. The other is where Garrick's yes. winning. So when Liliana wins, you're discarding cards. Yes, and Garrick is looking really, really, really pained out. Really, if you know, I mean, there's hands coming. Oh, yeah, like, so get gross. Him and stuff. The the zombies ain't running on this I'd one. I'd much rather get punched zombies in the face running. than zombies grabbing me. Maybe not zombies. from Garrick, though. Garrick looks strong. He's got that big thing, that big yeah. cloth. Thing I just don't thing. want to meet either of these people. Well, how do we feel about it as a card? Uh, it is... Marginal. Very marginal. I'd much rather draw a card than force my opponent to discard a card, because when you draw a card, you're always going to draw a card unless you have zero cards in your library, where if you discard, they might not have any cards. So yeah. like, or they might just be sandbagging it, and then they play their best card. And then once they're playing in top deck mode... Yes. It's card might as well be blank. Like yeah, you card advantage is always better and limited than card disadvantage. Yeah, like so, just just play the green one. Don't play the black one. It's pretty easy. So I like undead executioner, two two for four. Yeah, it's awesome. But you're killing, you know, usually killing something very. You can profit. It's a two on for side. one, or you trade up. Yeah, it's beneficial. I'll block your four toughness guy and yeah. get rid of him. That sounds great. Unhallowed pact is our final black card, and. You know, it's sort of like a you're you're, you're, you're pre-ordering your zombify. Yeah, I I love this card. Like, and the best part is you can get their creature, so you can like enchant their creature and be like, guess what I'm doing next time. <laughs> 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 so sweet. Yeah, that's that's why I like this card. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that you can you can enchant theirs. Sometimes that sort of sets you up for two for one. But if the two for one is you get some ridiculous bomb, then you get a ridiculous that's bomb. I mean, yeah. So. High five. Yeah, it's great. Or three for one. Hell, I don't care. I'll double block <laughs> a 6-6 six, six to get a 6-6. Six, six. Then they bounce, and you're like, oh. Oh, sadness. Yeah. All right, so those were our black cards. We went through every single one of them. The scary ones are gone. We appreciate you guys for watching, and we are going to be back tomorrow. Tomorrow with all the red cards. And we will see you then. For Brad Nelson, and Evan Irwin, we're tapping the cards so you don't have to.
always liked the fatties.